Luke 15, 1 through 7. Luke 15, 1 through 7. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around here, Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the, in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Good morning, church. So our um, children's song today is probably my favorite children's song ever. Jesus loves me. And the reason it's my favorite is because it reminds me of what mattered the most to Jesus when he was on earth, especially when I do this, the motions. Did you guys do the motions when you guys were singing it today? Okay. Um, so. You can, go with, you can do it with me if you guys want. It, this is the American Sign Language for the actual song. So I'm not going to sing it because I, I don't sing well, right? So here it is. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Did you guys... I told you this before in a previous sermon a while back, but do you guys remember what Jesus was in the sign language? I want to see it. There, this, right? The two fingers in the middle that touch the center of the palms. And it represents Jesus' hands crucified on the cross. Jesus loves me. What mattered most to Jesus when he was on earth, was my salvation, your salvation, people's salvation. Jesus left the comfort of his home in heaven so he, he could come down to earth in the form of human being, the form of man, our form, so he could die for our sins. Because he realizes that people are sinful and that the wages of sin is death, as we read in Romans 6, 23, and that there's nothing that we could do to relieve ourselves of our sins. We cannot forgive ourselves of our sins. We can do anything to get rid of our sins, and only he could do it. So he came down to earth to die for our sins. Now, this, uh, this compassion that Jesus had for us is something that um, um, is something that he had for us because of what of, of, of the action that he wanted to um, uh, do in light of our state, and we, we understand that's what compassion is all about, right? We talked about that the last time, and so what mattered most to Jesus is my salvation, and he confirmed this in Luke 19 verse 10. He said it himself. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And in, I think it's in 1 Timothy, yeah, 1 Timothy, the Apostle Paul affirms this rather emphatically. He said, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He's all about salvation. That's what Jesus came here to do. And um, again, he has this compassion, heart of compassion for the lost. And from the last time I spoke to you, I talked about that. You know, we're people of compassion because Jesus himself says that we need to be compassionate like God is compassionate. And we see that in Luke 6, 36. You must be compassionate just as your father is compassionate. This compassion that we have for people doesn't just rest with us here in this 
hall in this in this auditorium it's not only for people that you like or you love not only the people that are the same as you not only with your brothers and sisters in christ this compassion goes out to the world to the people that don't have jesus to the people that don't even like jesus that are opposed to jesus to the people that are opposed to to us to the people that are out there that are really far away from us it extends also to them so this morning what i would like to do is i would like to talk to you about jesus heart of compassion for the lost and the reason why as we saw earlier is because he calls us to the same heart and we understand that the heart of compassion is something that god also has specifically for the lost because we were also lost once all of us so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at what dean read to us very eloquently today the parable of the lost sheep we're going to look at that parable and we're going to look at two things that we can learn from that parable about jesus heart of compassion and so we're going to start with the first thing that we can learn from that parable about jesus is that jesus sees the lost as valuable okay when you see people when you look at them what do you see here's what jesus sees when he looks at people matthew 9 36 to 38 when he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd that is what jesus thinks about when he saw people when he was there on earth he had compassion for them because he realizes that they're lost they're lost they were harassed and helpless um this compassion that jesus has i think I, I i told it to you the last time i preached is compassion is perhaps the most profound demonstration of the love of god that we can ever see because we said that compassion starts with sympathy you know when we appreciate that people are suffering when we see that people are struggling when we see that people are, are harassed and helpless when we see people are lost when we see people are hurt and because they are hurt they hurt other people we understand that we see that in people but compassion goes another step further if we have compassion we will not only understand that we will also be with people who are experiencing that we will be there with them through their pain through their suffering through their lostness through their helplessness through the abuse that they get from the world from the people around them and from the emotions that come with it but here's the thing we say compassion is probably the best expression of god's love because compassion is not just sympathy or empathy all those two things are good but compassion does not stay there compassion goes an, a step even further than those two things because compassion acts it understands it is there and it wants to do something and that's what jesus does and has done jesus saw the crowds of people who are lost and this is why this is why the re, this is the reason why he was there remember in isaiah jesus was prophesied to come to earth right and his name was not jesus at the time it was emmanuel do you guys remember what that name meant emmanuel it means god with us god in the world god with people see god is a god who's there with us he doesn't deal with us at arm's length he is here with us and jesus was there to do something about our condition he was there to die for our sins now when we look at people sometimes we don't have the heart of jesus that's compassionate for them i know i don't all the time i know i don't i fail 
Sometimes when I look at people, I don't see them as valuable as Jesus did. You know, because I have my own biases, I have my own emotions, I have my own weaknesses. Sometimes there's just some people that are too far away from me that it's hard for me to get close to them and to even think that they're valuable enough to be saved. You guys know what I'm talking about. Some people are just, you know, some people just rub us the wrong way. There are some people that even annoy us. Maybe some people are like, maybe their jokes are not funny. And they keep saying the same jokes and you don't like that. So you don't want to have anything to do with them. Maybe at work, there's people that don't really do their job well and it affects you. Maybe um, at work or maybe in our family, maybe even in our neighborhood or in our school, there are people that are just really too different from us. They don't dress the same as we do. They don't look like us. They don't eat the same foods as we do. They, in fact, they eat weird foods, perhaps, right? They even smell differently than us, or maybe they even sound differently than us. And so it's hard for us to have that compassion that Jesus has when he sees people. But we need to remember that we, that we have our own judgments. And our judgments need to be gentle, not harsh. Because when our judgments are harsh, our emotions get in the way. And then we prevent ourselves from demonstrating the heart of compassion to people that Jesus has. Okay? I think, remember Roger, during the Lord's Supper, he mentioned John 3.16. Was it Roger that, no, it was that. Sorry, Brad did. Brad mentioned uh, John 3.16. Remember that? It's the most memorized passage in all of Scripture. Do you guys know it? Can you guys, can you guys, can you guys recite it with me? Okay, John 3.16. Okay, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16. That's the love of God. But do you guys know what John 3.17 is? Do we know what John 3.17... I think John 3.16 is here, right? Sorry. There we go. Do you guys know what John 3.17 is? John 3.17 is... For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We know John 3.16, but we don't want to know John 3.17. Because John 3.17 says the harshness and the judgment has to be set aside. Because that is not what Jesus came to do on earth. Did you see that? When we do that, we have the heart of compassion that Jesus has. Don't condemn. Help people. That is what we need to do. The next thing that I would like to share with you concerning the, 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 the parable of the lost sheep the fact that Jesus, you know, sees the loss as valuable. The fact that he goes out there and mingles with, uh, with, with, with the sinners. In fact, the Pharisees, you know what I'm saying? The Pharisees accused him of doing something bad, that he eats and, and welcomes sinners. But we all know that that's, that's because people are valuable to him. Okay? But the next thing that I would like to talk to you is this, that Jesus seeks out the lost. He proactively goes out there to find lost people. This is what the parable really is all about. He leaves the 99 so that he can go out there and find the one lost sheep. 
Okay, so I have a question for you. How many of you have been lost? Raise your hands if you've been lost. If you can under, if you can see, not the majority of the people did not raise their hands. So I can understand that the majority of the people are one of those people who have been lost, but they don't want to admit it. <laughs> I know what you mean. Like I, I have the same problem. I can't admit that I'm lost. Because I guess I'm a man, I just can't, right? When I'm driving and I don't know where I'm going, I don't tell my wife that I'm lost. I tell them, well, I just don't know where I am right now. <laughs> not, not, not right now, but I will soon. People are lost. And the thing about lost people is most of the time, they do not know that they're lost. And when, even if they know that they're lost, they deny that they're lost, and they do not admit that they are lost. That is why we need to go out there and seek them out. We can't just go, you know what, I'm going to wait here in the building to see if people are going to seek God. They won't. Most of the time, they won't. We need to go out there and find them. The best thing about that is we don't need to find Hard, to look hard to find lost people. We know them. Maybe we live in the same house with them. Maybe we live in the same neighborhood as them. Maybe we're related to them or we go to school with them. Or perhaps we work with them. We don't need to, find, uh, to, to look hard to find lost people. It is God's desire for us to do that because that's part of our identity remember we've been looking at that we are fishers of people that's who we are that is our, that is who we are in christ when we follow him he promises us that he's going to make us fishers of people matthew 4 19 remember that so what we need is uh to understand that when we say that jesus seeks out the lost the way that he does it today is that he uses his people as instruments of his salvation so that we can be the light for them. We are the ones that have been entrusted with this mission because Jesus, when he went up, when he ascended into heaven, he gave us that, he passed on that mission to us, that work to us. But what I'm going to do now in this particular point is I want to give you two ways in which we seek out the lost. How, does, how do we actually do that today? How do we seek out the lost today? Number one, we need to understand their situation. Because when we understand, then we arm ourselves with information. And when we arm ourselves with information, our emotions follow. Remember I mentioned earlier about the people that are far away from us? Okay, when we understand what they are like without Christ, we will be much more apt to look at them and have the compassion that Jesus had for people. To look at them and go, they do not have direction in life because they do not have God in their lives. And so we will be more apt to help them. So first, we need to understand their situation. In, under, in, in other words, why are the lost lost? So one of the things that, I, that really uh, comes to mind when we talk about a verse that tells us why the lost is lost is this verse right here. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, very popular passage. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The word fall, fall short can also be translated as lack or don't have. When we sin, because we have sinned, God's glory does not reside in us. We don't have it. It's not there. It is God's desire that everybody glorify Him. But when we sin, can't do that. Can't glorify Him. That's why we have a big and amazing mission that Jesus has given to us. To reconcile God to Him so that we can all glorify Him. We want to bring back the glory of God in people. So they too can be the image bearers 
that God has created them to be. But that needs a lot of care, and that needs a lot of relationship, that needs a lot of time, that needs a lot of patience, and that requires Jesus and Jesus um, and Jesus' work. So um, to glorify God, this is what God has told people that we need to have between Him and us is love. Do you remember the greatest command, right? Um, hold on a sec. Not this one. The greatest command right here. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Okay? That's the first part. We know the second part is we need to love others as we love ourselves. But let's focus on this because we're talking about our relationship with God. And we're talking about the reason why the lost are lost. It's because they have sinned, the glory of God is not in them, and they are definitely not doing this. So when we look at somebody, when we look at people, we need to understand where they're at. And this is where they're at. Their whole self is not glorifying God. That's the whole self right there. When we're talking about the, the heart, the soul, the strength, and the mind, we're talking about the whole person. If we have a relationship with God, it means that you love God with everything that you are. Heart, soul, strength, and mind. Okay? Lost people do not have that. And so that is the biggest reason why we are so far away from them. Is because pies. Okay? I'm going to explain. People are made, of, made up of pies. I'm going to explain that. Okay? See the letters? See the colors? I don't know if you guys see color, uh, the colors are weird on this one. Right? Pies are what people are made of. Physical. We are physical. We're intellectual. We're emotional. And we're spiritual. We're physical. That's the strength. You see that? Strength. We love, our God. We love God with all of our strength. Physical. We love God with all of our mind. That's intellectual. We love God with all of our emotions. Heart, spirit, soul. You see that? We need to understand that when we see people, they will not have godly things in them because they don't have God. So they will, look at this, they will act differently from us. Do you see that? Because they don't have Jesus, they will think differently than us. Because they don't have Jesus, they will feel differently than us. And finally, since they do not believe in Jesus, they will believe different things. So our job is to help them get there. But a lot of times, here's what we do a lot of times as Christians. We say, hey, I have compassion for the lost, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed them. I'm going to clothe them. And that's it. End of. How about the IES? What are we doing with that? I mean, clothing and food, important. Very important. We see that in Scripture. But we cannot stop there. We need to enhance and build our relationship with people so that we can deepen our conversations with them. So in time, we can talk to them about how they think, how they feel, and what they need to believe that is true in God's Word. That is how we need to have compassion for people. So um, the next thing that I would like to talk to you about um, is this. Well, the reason... Um, before I go to the second one, the second way that we seek out the lost, look at this particular passage. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Look at that. That passage and everything else that we know about Scripture, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you really believe that without Jesus... People are lost. 
like hand on heart. Do you believe that without Jesus, people are lost? I do. I do. And that's why this, there, there's this urgency with this seeking the lost business that we're talking about today. And so in seeking the lost, not only do we need to, um, do we need to understand the lost, the second thing is we need to proactively go out to them. We need to leave the 99. We need to leave our comfort zones and go after the one for the sake of their soul. Because we understand that their soul is very valuable. Okay, one of the things that I, that I find hard when I talk about this is, you know, things... We think about things. I need to go out there, Jay. That's not comfortable. But again, I go back to the context. We don't need to go far. We don't need to look hard to find people that are lost. We only need to look around our friends our family, our neighbors, our relatives, perhaps our parents and our siblings. They're around us. We already have a relationship with them. And so it behooves us to tell them about this, to tell them about our faith, to tell them that without Jesus, you will be lost. But do it in a way that they will understand. Do it in a way that they know that we care about them. Do it in a way that will not push them away so far, so far away from Jesus even further. Do it in a gentle, loving, caring, serving, and compassionate manner. Knowing that as a human being, they are made of many different layers. That they act, think, feel, and believe. And we just need to win their thoughts over to God. Now... I'm going to illustrate the importance of this with, 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 uh, with, with uh, American Idol. Okay? Have you guys seen American Idol? I've never seen American Idol from start to finish. I've only, I only watch the best part. Do you guys know what I'm talking about, right? American Idol is a singing show. I feel like I have to explain what it is. <laughs> American Idol is a singing show where contestants come in and they do auditions and if they're good, they pass on to the next level. And then, you know, there's levels. And then when, if, if they get voted in by the judges, they keep going until they win the whole contest. Okay? American Idol. So I, I think there's also Canadian Idol, but I've never seen it. I've only seen American Idol. But again, I've never seen the whole thing because I only watch the best part. If you guys watch American Idol, what's the best part for you? I'm going to guess the bad auditions. Right? Like, I, I, I you know, yeah, Shauna, Shauna knows what I'm talking about. The bad auditions. You see them there, they look good, and they're so confident, and then they open their mouths and they sing. It was like, what is happening? But this is not the thing. The judges, they know the entertainment value of this, right? So they keep going. They don't stop them. They just laugh. They, go, <laughs> they just go, they keep going. And I feel bad for them. But also, I'm entertained. Right? But here's the, here, here's the clincher. Sometimes the cameras pan over to the backstage. And you know what's in the backstage? Their relatives. Their friends. And they were, they're going, ah, like they're going, oh, that's bad. Yeah. And I'm thinking, dude, you know that they can't sing. Why did you urge them to go on American Idol? Now, let's bring that back to what we're talking about today. We're talking about compassion for the lost. We're talking about the fact that people are valuable. And because people are valuable, even they're, they're lost souls. We need to see them as lost souls that need to be saved. And that, you know, Jesus did that for them. And that Jesus 
seeks out the lost, and that he has given us that, that task, that work to seek out the lost for God. And when we do that, we understand what's, what, 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 what they need. And they, we understand why they're lost. And we're, we're proactive when we seek them out. And we say that we don't look far. We, we just look around. We just look beside us. And there we, have some, we could have somebody who has not been to Christ in baptism. And we can lead them to Jesus. But we all know this already. But we need to understand that there's an urgency to it. And there's not just an urgency, but there's, there, there's some absurdity with the, with the idea that we could know people that are not saved today and we just don't do anything about it. That we could be the reason why we could be, we could be the one that God has put in their, in, in, in their circle to tell them about Jesus and we may not be doing anything about it. So this morning, as I conclude, I would just like to address all of us who are members of the church. Our desire for evangelism may be lacking right now. And our compassion for the lost may seem non-existent at times. Today, I encourage all of us to remember the compassion of Jesus for the lost. To remember that when we look at people, we want to put the eyes of Jesus on and the heart of Jesus on. That people who are lost are valuable souls that need to be saved. And a lot of times, they don't know that they're lost. And we need to actively seek them out. And finally, if today you think you're lost, or you're not sure if you're lost, um, please come talk to me. And you know, I, I talk to the, the people as well that are members of the church that you know you don't know perhaps maybe you don't know how to approach people that you love please come talk to me as well, because I can help you with that. But for those of you who, are, who have not been to Jesus in the waters of baptism, today you have the opportunity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand over there during the song, and the song is an amazing song that reminds us of the compassion of Jesus and his willingness to leave his home to come to earth to die for us. I'm going to stand over there because... If, if, you have, if you have not been to Jesus in the waters of baptism, if you have not put him on as your Lord and Savior, we stand here with you. We are with you in, in your journey. When, if you're seeking Jesus today and you just want to say, you know what, I have questions or, you, or, or I, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna put Jesus on today in baptism, I would just like to say we are here for you on that. And if you know that you're lost and you, you don't know what to do yet, you don't want to tell anyone or you just want to keep coming, please keep coming. We are here for you as well. You know why? Because Jesus is compassionate for both you and for me. So please, as we sing the, 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 the song of invitation, please pay close attention to the words because it's going to remind us of how amazing our Lord and Savior is. Let's stand and sing.